What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's up, guys? So, Beauty and the Beast, Tom, Skull Island, Logan, Episode 8, Last Jedi, the teaser best trailer. love letters to Hollywood that we have this ever seen. This film is a masterpiece. So, until the next time, goodbye. Ant-Man and the Wasp is directed by Peyton Reed and it's the latest film in the MCU. It's the most recent film after Infinity War. This is a fun, if somewhat forgettable Marvel film. I wouldn't say it's better than the first Ant-Man film. I do somewhat prefer that film, but it's still got lots of fun stuff to offer. Paul Rudd really carries this film. He is just always the bright spot, even when the film's lacking. He's always charming, likeable. He's so funny on so many occasions. There are at least one or two jokes that have me laughing a minute or two after they've been delivered. He's just such a likeable actor that his presence in this film really bolsters it. The rest of the supporting cast is great as well. Michael Pena once again steals it. His stories, when it sort of zooms in on him and he tells a fast-paced story, those, once again, are the highlights of this film, as they were in the first film. Michael Douglas, again, as Hank Pym, is great. He just adds an extra air of gravitas to the film. Evangeline Lilly is given more to do. She is one of the title characters, and she works well with Paul Rudd. Um, although I didn't quite buy into their relationship, because you only got to see them start their relationship at the end of the first Ant-Man, and then... At the start of this film, lots of stuff has happened and you basically have to assume that all of that stuff happened off screen. And as a result, you don't really buy into their relationship as much as you would if you physically saw it. The film is always likeable. There was never really a dull moment. It's, it's always trying to make you laugh or make you smile. It knows that after Infinity War, it is the complete opposite. It is not serious whatsoever. There wasn't... One moment when I was like, oof, this is serious, as there were multiple in Infinity War. Ant-Man and the Wasp is the complete opposite. Once again, the technology displayed in the film, the uh, shrinking and enlarging technology, you've seen some of the cool things in the trailers, that's, that's just really unique, and that's what makes the Ant-Man films stand out from the rest of the MCU, from the rest of most action films. It's the unique premise. The first Ant-Man was really interesting because, you know, he can shrink down. There were those really fun scenes when he's when it's him running, flying on the ants. You get those as well. Ant-Man and the Wasp has plenty of really cool actual Ant-Man action scenes. And as I said, there are so many funny jokes and lots of them had me laughing for a very long time. So those are the things I liked about the film. As for things I didn't really like, there are way too many subplots. At least one, maybe even two of them could have been cut out. There's one involving uh, Walton Goggins as this businessman who wants Hank Pym's technology technology, that really could have been cut out, that had no impact on the plot whatsoever. Also, there isn't really one major storyline. I would say the one that's focused on the most is uh, Hank Pym uh, trying to get his wife back, Hope Van Dyne trying to get her mother back, who was, uh, she was stuck in the quantum realm. I'd say that's the main plot. And the mother is played by Michelle Pfeiffer, and when she comes back, that's not really a spoiler, when she comes back, she's barely in the film. So. I wanted more of Michelle Pfeiffer. I would say that's the main storyline, but it's not really the focus because there are so many other things going on. Scott Lang is under house arrest. There's an FBI agent who's trying to make sure that he stays in his house. There's that businessman plotline. And there's other stuff with Scott's daughter and his wife and his wife's new husband. And then there's a villain called Ghost who shows up from time to time. She could have been a really interesting character, but again, she isn't the main focus. She has a very interesting backstory. Uh, I forget the actress's name, but she does a really good job. She's a very interesting character when she's on screen. The uh, visual effects for her, she can phase in and out of the quantum realm. They looked really cool. But again, nothing is really focused on, so you've basically got lots of different subplots and not really one main plot. Also, I never really felt that Hank and Hope were like a, a, a really strong family. So by the time Michelle Pfeiffer's character comes back, there wasn't as much of an emotional punch when she comes back. You should really be feeling, you know, she's been gone for 50 years. Wow, she's finally coming back. I never really felt that. And that's part of the film not really having much weight, not ever taking itself seriously. But overall, Ant-Man and the Wasp was fun to watch. I wouldn't say it's one of the better MCU films, but I would say that they've never made a film that wasn't at least somewhat entertaining. I'm going to give Ant-Man and the Wasp a B-. minus. It's fun, but definitely forgettable. At this point, I'm struggling to remember standout action scenes, and in all the great action films, and all the great MCU films, there are at least one or two standout scenes, but I can't really think of one for Ant-Man and the Wasp. So, those are my thoughts on Ant-Man and the Wasp. If you guys have seen it, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do, and until the next time, goodbye.